all aboard the value train. Last station, Annihilation. Well, hello there, random person on the internet, and we got no time to waste because we got a train to catch. Only one thing to do, if you want any of these cards that are vaguely related to the theme of today's deck or anything magic related, cardkingdom.com is your place to be. Link is in the description. Now, let's hurry, the value train is about to take off. Whew, got there just in time, and look at this beautiful hand. A bunch of creatures that create tokens and a junk winder with affinity to tokens to play for cheap? Now that's a keep right there. Oh, and it's a mulligan. Well, best case everything in our hand is a two drop anyway so let's bottom a land play a botanical sanctum and see what our opponent is up to plays a mountain and just passes well they might have removal but we're not here to play it safe cast lonus cryptozoologist a two mana one two that creates a clue whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control we're gonna go over this massive text box when it's relevant let's first see if we get to untap with it oh no removal yet Dragon Skull Summit and Conspicuous Snoops. So they are black red goblins. The snoop allows them to play and activate abilities of goblins off the top of their library. Well, at least we see what they're drawing every turn. But that also means no removal, so we can get the value train started. Play a Gala Greeters. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, we get to choose one that hasn't been chosen this turn. Put a counter on it, create a tap treasure token, or gain two life. Enters the battlefield, Lonus triggers to create a clue, cast a gilded goose, create a tap treasure with the greeters, a food from the goose and a clue from Lonus. Well, that junk grinder is already down to 3 mana, let's see what our opponent can do about it. Mountain and place a goblin war chief off the top of their library, making their goblins cheaper and giving them haste. Oh, that's gonna be a pretty scary next turn on their side, but it might already be too late. Play a land and slam down the junk grinder. A 7 mana 5-6 that gets cheaper for every token we control and whenever we create a token, it will tap down a non-land permanent without untapping the next untap step. Not only can we play it for only 3 mana here, it will immediately trigger 2 times with the treasure from Gala Greeters and the clue from Lonus tap down their board. Now we could play this Prosperous Innkeeper to create more tokens, but we don't have anything left to tap and already created a treasure with Gala Greeters for the turn, so let's keep it for next turn. Swing for 1, set a stop in their draw step, pass the turn, creatures stay tapped, they draw a land and a goblin chieftain on top. Well, they probably thought the value train would stop just because it's their turn. <laughs> Bad news. Activate Lonus, sacrifice X clues, target opponent reveals the top X cards of their library. You may put a non-land permanent with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield under your control. Well, sacrifice three clues, top three cards. Yep, looks like we get the Chieftain. It doesn't really do anything in our deck, but it is a creature entering the battlefield, so get a treasure, tap the Snoop, create a clue, tap the War Chief. Now, let's hope they don't go off on us here. At least there's a land on top of their library. Place a mountain and a Cranko Mob Boss taps to create goblin tokens equal to the number of goblins they control. It has haste because of the War Chief, so they are going to get some value out of it before we tap it down forever. And a Runeveld Hortmaster to pump their team? Let's force them to activate Cranko before this hits the board. Use Gilded Goose to create a food token. Junkwinder triggers, hit the Mob Boss. They activate it in response. Or Master hits the board and we draw a thought monitor. It has affinity to artifacts and could be reduced to only one mana if we cast this prosperous innkeeper before, but we might need it in hand if we draw a specific card, so cast the monitor for two. Gala Greeters creates a treasure, tap a goblin, Lonis creates a clue, tap a goblin, thought monitor draws two cards, a land and another Greeters. I guess we can throw it all out there and draw cards with our clues to find more action next turn. Play the Greeters, enters the battlefield, put a counter on the other one one, get a clue, tap a goblin, play a land, prosperous innkeeper. We're at a point where everything we'll do will create loads of triggers and values, so let's try to make this quick. Enters the battlefield, everything triggers, Gala Greeters create a treasure and gain to life, Lonus creates a clue, everything is tapped, set a stop in their draw step, attack for 9, down to 10, pass the turn, nothing untaps, they draw land, and Munitions Expert on top. Enters the battlefield, deals damage to target creature equal to the number of goblins you control. Well, I'm not gonna let them cast this off the top of their library and kill my junk miner. So, Lonis, two clues, get the expert, 
Target their lord, get all the triggers. Opponent loves to see it. Tap some goblins, shoot the horde master, death trigger, exiles a cranko, regain a life, keep up gilded goose to create a food and pass into their main phase. Land. Maxis. Oh my god, if this kills us, I'm gonna lose it. When it enters the battlefield, they put all the goblins from the top six cards of their library onto the battlefield. We know that one of them is a mountain, but we still might be dead here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, we did take a ride on the value train, but we didn't even reach its final destination, so... This hand has a lot of lands, but I guess we want to have land drops for this tireless tracker anyways. Play land, pass the turn, see what we're up against this time. Land. And a moon snare prototype, so there's some sort of blue artifact deck and it seems like they have a zero drop here since they didn't automatically pass the turn. Ugh, we draw another land. Okay. Gala greeters, pass the turn. They play a land and there's a zero drop, Tormund script and another one in Ornithopter. Oh yeah, okay, and a nettle cyst, a living weapon, meaning it's an equipment that comes attached to a 0-0 germ token. It gives plus one plus one for every artifact they control, so it's already a 4-4, which is uh, kinda scary. Hmm, so we do draw Lonis here. We could play this Prosperous Innkeeper and use the treasure to cast Lonis as well, but I think we need to get as many tokens as possible to have a chance of popping off before we are dead to this nettle cyst, so cast Lonis. Gala Greeters creates a treasure and just pass the turn. They play land. Ugh, and an Aether Spellbomb. So now they can pay a blue mana and sacrifice this to bounce a creature. Okay, pumps the Nettlesis to a 5 5. Ooh, and they equip it to their Ornithopter. I wouldn't have jump blocked anyways, but okay. Swings for 5 in the air. And we draw another land, yikes. Now it hurts to say, but we can play the tireless tracker here. Not only can they just bounce it with the spell bomb, but we also might need to keep mana up to channel this Otavara in case they go too wild with pumping their Thopter. So let's just play Prosperous Innkeeper, create a treasure and a treasure and a clue, play a land, swing for two, pass the turn, land, and another net assist. Oh, oh, yes, please. Please equip it to the Thopter. Oh boy, the channel lands coming in clutch again. Swings for 12 in the air, but what's this? Channel Otavara, return target artifact, creature, enchantment, or planeswalker to its owner's hand. Oh, okay. Bounce the Thopter, and they're tapped out for the turn. Too bad they can just replay the Ornithopter because it costs zero mana. Oh. Come on now. But hey, if there's one good reason to draw a lot of lands, it's Tireless Tracker. Fun fact, it's my favorite creature in Magic. A 3 mana 3-2 three with whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we create a clue token. And whenever we sacrifice a clue token, we put a plus one plus one counter on it. Enters the battlefield, everything triggers, create a treasure, create a clue. Okay, so we can play a land, create a clue with the Tireless Tracker, and I guess we just have to pray they don't kill us next turn. Sacrifice a a clue to draw a card, put a counter on the tracker. Ooh, a Chatterfang. Well, that's probably the best card in our deck. We just have to hope to untap with it. They have 12 damage on board, but every artifact they play adds 2 damage with these nettle cysts. Oh god, another spell bomb. That's 14 damage. Equips the nettle cysts. Okay, 14 power. Do they have another zero drop on artifact land? They go to combat? So we survive? Okay, down to two. And they don't even have mana left to activate these spell bombs? Oh, never mind. But they'll probably play it safe and keep it open to bounce their own Ornithopter if we have removal. So here we go, one chance. Ooh, we draw a Thought Monitor. <laughs> Perfect. All aboard the value train. Here comes the captain, Chatterfang, Scribble General. If one or more tokens would be created under our control, those tokens plus that many 1-1 one, one green Scribble tokens are created instead. Now I expect our opponents to be very hesitant with the spell bomb, but they might want to stop this. On the other hand, they might just underestimate how insane this ability is in our deck. Oh, okay then, here comes the triggers. Gala Greeters creates a treasure token, which will create a scribble token, which will trigger the Gala Greeters and Innkeeper again. Lonis creates a clue and a scribble, Greeters and Innkeeper trigger again, back up to 7 life, play a land, create a clue and a scribble, and now we just have to hope to draw the right card with this thought monitor. Cast it for one, enters the battlefield, get a clue, a scribble and 2 life, draw 2 cards, create a hoof behemoth. 
Uh, okay, when Crater of Behemoth enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of creatures you control. Yeah, this would obviously be insane here, but 8 mana? We're not gonna be alive to untap our lands again. I guess we have to keep digging, crack a clue, draw a card, counter on the tracker, Neoform, sacrifice a creature, search your library for a creature with mana value equal to 1 plus the sacrificed creature's mana value and put that on the battlefield. Wait, 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 why is the Doom music playing? Hold up. This costs 8 mana. And this costs 7 mana. Well, I regret to inform our opponent, but the value train is about to reach its destination. Neoform the Thought Monitor. Get the Crater Hoof. One last stack of triggers. Oh, now they use the spell bomb. <laughs> sure, too late. Everything gets plus 10 plus 10. Next station, Annihilation. Oh, wait, what's this? A like button? Huh, I wonder what happens when we tap it. Bonus game! Well, if you tap that like button, we gotta have a bonus game. Kinda sketchy keep though, not gonna lie. At least we already have the combo in hand. Opponent plays a tap land. We play a tap land. Opponent plays a faceless haven. Oh, okay, that might actually be bad news. Play botanical sanctums and a gala greeters. Pass the turn. Land, cultivate, get two snow covered planes. And we draw another neoform. <laughs> That's kinda awkward. Play a land, play a tireless tracker, create a treasure token, swing for one. Opponent plays the other planes, settle the wilds. Wow, they really like ramping. Kinda worried we'll see a board wipe soon though. Gala greeters, sure, I guess we'll just hope they don't have a wrath. Create a treasure, miss the land drop so we don't even get a clue with the tracker. Swing for four, pass the turn. Forests. Oh, there it is. The Book of Exalted Deeds. That's kinda bad news. Here's what they're gonna do next turn. Turn Faceless Haven into a creature with all creature types, including Angel, and then activate the book to put an enlightened counter on target Angel. It gains, you can't lose the game, and your opponents can't win the game. And then they have a land that prevents them from losing the game. So, uh, yeah, we uh, kinda have to kill them this turn. Psychrutus Route gets two more lands, and here we go. Prosperous Innkeeper, uh, oh wait, no, this, this might actually do it in a way, I mean, if you get away with it. This might go horribly wrong if they have a board wipe, but we have to go for it. Swing for five, sacrifice Gala Greeters to get a three drop with Neoform, get a Chatterfang, create a treasure and a Skrill, which will trigger the Greeters for two life, play a Prosperous Innkeeper, put a counter on the Greeters, create a treasure and a Skrill, gain some life and, um, pass the turn? So we just got to hope our opponent doesn't see it? Oh yes, yes, yes! Tap that snow mana! Animates the Faceless Haven. This is gonna be brutal. Activate the Book of Exalted Deeds. Uh oh! Sneaky onboard tricks! Activate Chatterfang. Sacrifice three Skrills. Target creature gets plus three, minus three until end of turn. Yikes! Well, I guess uh, we got away with it. Oh, and they passed the turn. No time to waste. Play a land, create a clue, junk winder for four, grow the greeters, and here comes the pain. Want to see more of my content? Check out the episode where we go infinite by slaughtering Chatterfang Skrulls. This video and more, all in this playlist. Remember to tap that like button, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one.